All right, welcome back, everyone, for another discussion about WandaVision. I uh, hope you saw episode four because this is spoiler heavy, hey. as all my WandaVision videos are. So we're going to talk about a recap and discuss everything that happened in episode four and a few questions that I think that it raises. All right, so we do get a departure. Finally, from the episodic sitcom style of show that they have been producing in the first three episodes thus far. That is needed. We did need this from a writing point of view, uh, this break for the audience to learn the very important things. So, uh, so yes, we did see this coming, but to the depth that this happened, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have guessed that. So the episode starts off with, Monica Rambo getting blipped. She was one of the humans that was snapped by Thanos originally, but got brought back in Endgame. And this is a beautiful uh, tribute, by the way, to to the effect of the blip of both the snap and then the after effects of the blip. Everyone coming back out of nowhere after five years, five years of people's lives moving on, and then boom. Everything sort of resets you know, in a fashion right back to where it started. So we also get to find out that her mother Maria that we first saw in the Captain Marvel movie has passed away. But we do learn that while she was alive, she was instrumental in the creation, if not solely responsible, we're not sure, but for the creation of S.W.O.R.D. So we do have definite S.W.O.R.D. right now besides the little hints uh, and teases that we had, the sentient world observation response department is uh, is officially in business in the MCU. And also, it seems to be already an established agency. Like, it's been around for a while because mention of being a sword agent doesn't get, like, who, what department. So it, it does seem to be well established at this point in the MCU reality. Upon returning to work, Monica is given a rather mundane job, but the writers make sure that the audience realizes that this is not her normal assignment, that she does hold a much higher position in S.W.O.R.D., and in fact is implied that uh, in the past she has been off Earth, possibly in that S.W.O.R.D. base that we saw at the end of, uh, of Spider-Man Far From Home, and if so, then that would imply that she knows or has worked for slash with Nick Fury, who we last saw was up in the sword base. Now, because of protocol specifically written by Monica's mom, she cannot enter back into the field at her uh, regular standing level, I guess you could say. So she's given a somewhat mundane job of going to investigate a missing person report out of New Jersey. She's not happy about this, but understands why it's happening. Uh, and, and goes on the case. Now, this is going to bring us to enter FBI agent Jimmy Woo, who you may remember from the Ant-Man movie, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It was, uh, he was well-established in the Ant-Man universe of the MCU, and now he's, now he's dealing with this. But what we find out is very interesting. We find out that he's involved because he has someone in the witness protection program who was in a town and this person disappeared. In fact, not only did this person disappear, but upon going through regular protocol and contacting family and friends, known associates, not only has no one seen or heard from this individual, but for some reason, nobody remembers or knows him, as Jimmy says. Hmm. But it turns out even deeper than that, because speaking to the local sheriff, they discover there is no Westview. The sheriff's from Eastview. There's no, no Westview. Now, this raises the question, is Eastview itself specifically missing, or did Eastview become Westview? And because the sheriff was outside of the effect when Wanda did it, he is not trapped inside as one of the bit players in the WandaVision sitcom. Hmm. With an entire town missing, they investigate Westview and find the shield effect, uh, the mystic energy, whatever it is, 
uh, the energy field around the town. And Jimmy Woo even comments that it's like it doesn't want him in. It doesn't want him to enter. It doesn't want him to even notice uh, this place. Uh, they send a drone in. And the drone is S-57. It's shaped vaguely like a helicopter. A modern-day drone helicopter is marked as Sword S-57. Hmm. So now we definitely get to see the connection going on here as we're watching effects and scenes that happened on the other side of the field while episode one and progressing forward have been taking place in Westview in WandaVision. Monica, curious, goes up to the field and tries touching it. And she sees that it's not solid, that it's not holding her back like, like trying to push one's hand through a, through a brick wall. So she pushes a little further, and a little further, and then she gets sucked right in. And that's when FBI agent Jimmy Woo makes a phone call. Enter Dr. Darcy Lewis. <laughs> we haven't seen Danny's character uh, since uh, Thor uh, The Dark World. Well, the last time we saw the intern to Dr. Jane Foster, and it turns out now she's gotten her own doctorate, and uh, she's an expert in the field, along with the other experts that are alongside with her. One is an expert in nuclear biology, another artificial intelligence, and chemical engineering. But nobody cares, <laughs> as Darcy as Darcy put it. So they get to the to the base, which is not only sword, but it's run by uh, many different. Uh, military and government organizations are all there in cooperation with each other, including Space Command, including Air Force Intelligence. Uh, it, it, is, it is a sea of experts from multiple fields in the military and the government. She is there because of her expertise in which her equipment, she quickly uh, detects that there is an extremely uh, high amount of CMBR, and that's the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation which has been emanating throughout our known universe literally since the Big Bang took place. It is the most ancient and relic form of energy uh, known in the universe. And in these high readings, which he says is still safe, but implies that it may not be for long, but buried deep in the background of this cosmic noise, she finds a TV signal. An old TV signal. So she needs to have them go get her an old-style box TV set. The kind I grew up with. Some of you, your parents or grandparents grew up with. But that's what she needs. That's what she gets. And upon plugging it in, lo and behold, they're watching WandaVision Episode 1. While this is going on, sword operatives make way to try to breach through the field through the sewer system and they set up a sword agent in a hazmat uniform and they send this agent franklin down through the sewers now cut back to sword and the affiliated scientists that are all collected there with them and we discover that from the energy readings they clearly see that the town of westview is encased in a hexagon the energy field is taking the shape of a hex. Hmm. Interesting, since in the comic books, Wanda's power has always been probability control, and it has been defined as her hex magic, or her hex bolts. Hmm. Regardless, the town of Westview is trapped in a hex. Everyone is glued onto WandaVision Episode 1. And the first thing that we get to find out and notice from this is that FBI agent Jimmy Wu, the first thing he says is, isn't Vision dead? That's what they think. Because that's what everyone knows. The, the last thing of Vision was in the Battle of Wakanda, and his skull got destroyed so Thanos could yank out the Mind Stone. Hmm. They think he's still dead. So... This implies that if he is alive or been reactivated, it is not generally known. 
So let's just go in the fact for right now that that has not happened. So this is establishing that Vision is still dead as far as the agencies of the world know. And even in the show itself, uh, it, brings, it brings Darcy to even wonder about why the universe would at its inception and creation create a television sitcom based on two Avengers. I think that's an interesting question. I don't think that that is the actual question, if you know what I mean. But I think that in the great scheme of things, that itself will, will prove to be an important question. At this point, it's also revealed that the person taking the notes at the very end of the episode as the screen pulled back, and we got to see that WandaVision Episode 1 was being watched by someone at S.W.O.R.D. taking notes. That was Darcy. She's been taking notes ever since uh, this has started in Episode 1. And just as the last episode was Episode 3, they, they, they don't get up to that point yet because that's real time. For them, uh, the ending of Episode 3 was the ending of, of, of Episode 4 so to speak. WandaVision Episode 3 was the ending of Episode 4 for us viewers in the greater world, not the meta world <laughs> that's happening right now. This is getting very meta. Now, they go through this series of trying to discover who the residents of Westfield are. Since this began as a missing person case, Jimmy Woo decides to start there. Let's identify everyone in the town. And through a quick little montage kind of scene, they do and they give us uh, exactly who they discover everyone in town is are. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hart are uh, Todd and Sharon Davis. Abolish, uh, Abolish Tandon is Norm. Harold Copter. Harold Copter is James. Uh... Isabel, I, Isabel Matsu, no, I'm not even going through that. And this way they learn who each of the bit players, so to speak, in the WandaVision sitcom really are. And they're just normal, everyday people. They're your, your neighbors in real life, so to speak. Uh, they are not sword agents that have been uh, put in deeply uh, undercover to watch Wanda. Uh, nothing like that. They, they're just the people that were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, very interesting. At this point, while this is happening, we get a very interesting shot of the whiteboard that FBI agent Jimmy Woo is, is keeping track of everything. And on this, we, we do get to see some things, uh, such as, uh, a list, uh, what we don't know, such as why a hexagonal shape, why sitcoms, some time and space, something he's blocking the rest of that, some time and space anomaly effect, maybe it says, and is vision alive? In, in, continuing the implication that even the government agencies believe he's dead still. It also adds a, a list of failed attempts of contact, which we see phone lines, digital, and drones. There's also a notation implicating that the area of effect around the town of Westview it has a five-mile radius. And then just off to the side, you can make out something that I believe reads who's behind this, who's behind it. And we can clearly see that one of the possible theories they have are scrolls. Next, while they're watching WandaVision, Darcy gets to see Monica Rambo, Agent Rambo's first uh, first appearance in the show, background character sitting on a bench, but but that's a major implication because now they know that their agent is still alive and they're just trying to figure out what is she doing? Has she been mind controlled, brainwashed? Is she considering herself in deep cover right now and trying to get into a character to gain intel? They're not sure, but they know at this point at least Monica is alive. And now we get to the scene in uh, One Division episode two, where they were planning the, the the big fundraiser for the children, and we get to see that Darcy had the idea to sort of piggyback these television waves to get a, a message across in the radio. So we do now have confirmation that yes, that was in fact Jimmy Woo on the radio trying to verbally reach out to Wanda. But very interesting, although this is a failed attempt because Wanda doesn't respond, uh, it is a success because his voice does come through, she does hear him, 
But Darcy notices a cut. At the moment that the glass pops, there's a, there's a quick cut. And that confuses Darcy, as it should. Now we can see that sword agent in the hazmat uniform as he approaches the field. Yes, it's underground. It's even in the sewer line that he's traveling through, crawling through. And as he passes through the field, that hazmat suit changes to a beekeeper suit. In fact, the tether line for him, not only does it break snapping uh, as he goes across, but, but the part of it that did go through before it broke off turned into a jump rope, that like sort of 60s, 70s style jump rope with the small little uh, plastic tubes uh, all along covering over the rope. That, that kind of style jump rope uh, is what it got turned into. And then we get to see the end of that WandaVision episode where her and, and, and Vision see the beekeeper coming out of the manhole and he turns to her and she says, no. But we see that from an opposite camera view the camera view, more of the point of view of the beekeeper, the sword agent. And then the scene ends. Where did the agent go? Where did Agent Franklin go? Continuing to watch from their base, they uh, up to episode three of WandaVision, and they, they get to see that she uh, gives birth. And as Darcy says, what a, she, uh, she says, uh, twins, or she says, uh, what a twist. She has twins. Uh, so that, that was a surprise to all of them. But they are all, something that I've noticed in the show is that they're all hooked on WandaVision. They are definitely hooked on the storyline. It's more than them just getting intel, I believe. Now, although uh, Agent Wu and Darcy, uh, neither of them bring up the fact that Pietro was mentioned, they do right away notice that Ultron was mentioned. In fact, they imply that this is the first time something from the real world has been mentioned in the show. I under I understand what they, what they mean. That was the first time, but I still think it's funny that they themselves don't mention anything about. Oh, she mentioned her brother. She Wanda mentioned her brother, but it was Geraldine, Monica, that mentioned Ultron, and uh, that that is not only noticed by them, but Darcy notices how the show takes a very dark turn at that point, as they watch Wanda question and approach Monica there's a cut there's an edit and it goes noticed and at that point Darcy says not again uh, implying to the audience that she did notice the snip the quick snip edit uh, after the radio scene in episode 2 she desperately tries to, to replay and, and capture and see if there's anything there at all but realizes that, no, someone has censored. Someone has edited the episode. Now, at that point, before they can delve any deeper into discussing this mystery, a klaxon alarm raises, and over a loudspeaker, we can, we can hear the sounds of chaos as we hear, alert, boundary has been breached. Alert, boundary has been breached. So, of course, obviously, Darcy and Jimmy get up, and they run out, leaving the scene just before the edit paused and boy Wanda is not looking happy but now it sort of closes in on that paused scene and we get to see the continuation from that moment we get to see where Wanda is asking her who she is what she's doing there questioning Geraldine's motives and self who says that she's, she's just a friend, she's a neighbor. That's all. No. No, not, not good enough for Wanda. Wanda. Wanda says, you're not my neighbor. She says, you're definitely not my friend. She tells her that you are a stranger and an outsider. And right now, you are trespassing here. And I want you to leave. The, the, the tension in this in this moment, in this scene, is more than palpable. This tension is as thick as a brick to the forehead. And, and that is by far no understatement. You can see the abject fear in Monica's eyes. She's well aware of who Wanda Maximoff is and what she's capable of. And now the realization that Wanda knows what's going on 
and not only doesn't seem to care, wants to keep things status quo, and the look in Wanda's eyes is telling Monica that she will do this at any cost necessary. Yes, you can see not only the hatred in Wanda, but the fear in Monica as well. And then the red energy in the hand and a blast. And Monica goes right through the wall, right through the wall, out of the house, down the block and hits the energy wall. What I found interesting at this point is Wanda herself looks like she's snapping out of something for a moment. She looks genuinely confused to me. She looks disturbed. No, confused, I think, works better, actually. She, she seems like she's uh, remembering what just happened almost from a dream. She doesn't seem fully aware, and then... And then she just fixes everything. Now, this is when we get to the scene that we're familiar with at the end of the last episode, with Vision coming back into the house and asking Wanda where Geraldine is, and Wanda saying that she had to rush home. Are you ready for it, the WTF moment? Because this is when Wanda turns to Vision. When she looks at him, she sees zombie Vision. Well, what I call zombie Vision. She sees dead Vision. She sees whole in the head, dead vision. But he's alive, and he's speaking to her, but he's colorless, and he's got the hole in his head. And she obviously gets worried, scared. She looks away, and then when she looks back, everything is normal. Vision tells her that if she's scared, if she's worried, if, if something's the matter, they don't have to stay. They can move. They can go wherever they want. And Wanda tells him no. No, they can't leave. And there's a, a worried look in Vision's face, almost like he's he's remembering what the doctor had just told him in that scene before that we saw in the previous episode, where the doctor said him and his wife would not be going on vacation because it's impossible to escape from a small town. And it almost looks like there's a connection to me with Vision. As she says that, he makes a connection to what the doctor just said. But then, then Wanda adds... This is our home. Implying one does not run away from their home. One stays and defends their home. It is their home. And that's what they're going to do. And Vision seems to understand that. When I took the look in his face. And then, just to make things a little bit creepier, Wanda looks Vision dead in the eye. And she says, don't worry, darling. I have everything under control. Oh, I just got goosebumps telling you that line. Yeah, there's something off with that, huh? And then just before the episode ends, before the credits roll, we see the sword agent surrounding Monica on the ground, checking her, seeing if she's alive, which she is, seeing if she's awake, which she is. And Jimmy Woo asks her how she is, and she says it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. Credits. All right, so, so that is the recap of episode four of WandaVision.